Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Curse of the Old Gods. I'm really glad you guys liked the first episode. I certainly did. And now we can go ahead and continue our investigations here in the Greenwich Museum, where we definitely know that foul play is afoot. Now, we're expecting a detective to show up at any time. Let's go ahead and see if anything new has popped up. No questions to the professor. Seems I haven't moved the statue by an inch, even though I was pushing with full force. We still have the ID, which is very heavily faded. Maybe the detective is in there with the director? Hello? Secretary? Coffee? <laughs> Already got all of that. Got the blood, the body markings. Let's see what we can do here. We can call. There's the email from Sarah Lee. We need to find the con all the content IDs. Unfortunately, that area is all faded out. Go ahead and save the game. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Hmm. We really need to go ahead and find some way to get this dealt with. Can't use the personnel file. Use smartphone on... Oh! I've taken a photo of the counter and increased the contrast. Now it reads 45Q3AA0. Oh, modern technology. Now I think we should be in good shape. Let's uh, contact the security company. I hope that's good enough. This is Agent Morton speaking. I'm calling from the Greenwich Museum. I found the patrol counters and need to know the times they've been logged in today. The IDs are A3BB33K, 45Q3AA0, and 81Q4-73B. Uh, one moment, sir. The first was at 10.42pm, the second on 10.57pm, and the last on 10.49pm. Thank you. I'll call back if I need anything else. So Mars was at the Africa exhibition right before he was found dead. Well, that does change things a bit. Professor? This exhibition was the last thing Robert Mars witnessed before he died. You've worked here the last couple of weeks. Has anything changed or is anything missing since yesterday? Oh, well, now that you ask, one piece is actually absent. The Cube of al -Hazred. Um, It hasn't been finished for display yet, so I figured that Professor Clayton took it to his office for further research. He was working on that bizarre piece since it arrived from Africa. Can you tell me anything more about that cube? Not much, to be honest. It's a cube made from some rare metal alloy covered in runes. I didn't recognize the writing, but I think Professor Clayton was up to something. The cube is about two inches wide and rather heavy and was found in a remote region in the Congo by Professor Wertheimer, like most of the pieces of this e exhibition. That's about all I know. I, I have to return to my studies now. Hmm. The Cube of al -Hazred, also known as the uh, Mad Arab who wrote the Necronomicon. Or Necronomicon. <laughs> Professor Clayton is not in his study. I should try and find him. Maybe he's taking the cube with him. Yes, but we need to examine this new place. I don't have the time to pick out books at random. Maybe I should come back when I'm looking for something specific. Ooh, that's a good clue. Calendar. Calendar of 2017 showing some dates and birthdays. Three birthdays are written in red. 1023, 1130, and 1213. Maybe those are from his family. And maybe I should go ahead and write those down. October 23rd, November 30th, December 13th. Hmm. 
Oh! Okay, so the globe is... The professor's computer. Strange only bleeps twice when I try and turn it on. Okay, definitely need to look at this. There's a lock on that globe. I bet if you find the right combination, you can open a secret compartment. Right. Hmm. Well, I know this is uh, a long shot, but, you know, sometimes. Does seem to be the correct combination. Okay. Just trying to remember the ninth gate. Well, where would he be? He's not here. Does the secretary know? Can you please tell me something about Professor Clayton's family? Uh, sure, sweetheart. Uh, he's been married for as long as I know to his wife, Margaret, who is 59, as far as I can remember. They have two kids. Ben has been adopted, and the other one... I'm sorry, I can't recall his name. They are 12 and 22. I can try and call him at home and find out the name of the older brother. Good idea. I wanted to see if he's home anyway. Oh, he's not in his office? Well, I'll do my best. Hello, Margaret? Lizzie here. I wonder if your husband is home? Oh, I see. Pardon the question, but what's your oldest's name again? Oh, sure. Thanks for the invitation. Nice talking to you. I, I have to go now. So, no, he's not at home. Margaret doesn't know where he is, either. Though I've got an invitation for dinner tomorrow, so I'll see him there, I guess. Oh, and the younger brother is called Ian. That was an awkward question. Yeah. Can we go into his... computer... bookshelf... We're doing this all kinds of out of order. Maybe we need to put out an APB? No, we already asked all the questions to Officer Bristol. Hmm. Nothing to Officer Carlson. I'm always afraid that, like, something new is suddenly going to pop up and I'm going to miss it. Let's use the smartphone. Director Madison, Angel Security, we don't need to call them. Okay. So it definitely has something to do in the office, kind of at the expense of everything else. All right. So. The combination. Oh. Oh, I could have sworn I heard something click. Well, let me kind of look around here and see if I find anything new, guys. So it looks like the calendar has been updated. The calendar of 2017 showing dates and birthdays. The first birthday, um, October 23rd, 1958, is his wife's. Third on 11.30, or November 30th, 2005, is from Ben. And the last on December 13th is Ian. So... Can try and use <laughs> smartphone on the computer. Just figured that was worth a shot. The smartphone is smart after all. Hmm. Now that we know that we can actually use the smartphone on something, personnel file. Nothing there. Hmm. And it's only three numbers, so... I'm, 
kind of curious. Well, let's look at the months here real quick. 10, 23, 11, 30, 12, 13. 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 3. Interesting thing is that we do have 113, 1023, 1213. The numbers are very similar on all of this, so this might be kind of a clue. Let's try 113 here. Okay, that was worth a shot at least. Hmm. 30 last is on 12 13 95 10 23 let me try some combinations here so looking at all of these dates the thing that they have in common here is 1 3 and 5 those are the three numbers that are showing up in both of these so let's go ahead and try that out 1 3 Ah, there we go. The lock opens with a click and I can open the globe. Inside I find a notebook from the professor. You've received notebook. So Clayton took the cube with him. I just talked to Officer Bristol and let her request an arrest warrant for the professor. I think I've deciphered the runes correctly now. The cube is in fact not from the tribal era as I suspected, but much older. Bradley and Jay are short-sighted. I'll have to continue my research elsewhere. Ooh, look at that. Think we got an elder sign. Use notebook on... nothing. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. We will go talk to the officer. Asked all the questions. Guess we hand off the notebook. So we have a main suspect. Sp suspect. Great work. I'll request a warrant immediately. It's something. Okay. So maybe we'll go talk. <laughs> Suddenly the fire alarm went off. It's coming from the Africa room. As you enter the room, you immediately see two cloaked figures. One is running to the back of the room, and the other is just standing there with a gun in its hand. Um. Predestination. A blurry vision shows you how a hooded figure will shoot you. You shake your head and return to the present. Better be careful with your next actions. Okay. Interesting. Let's uh, go ahead and save the game. Okay. Gotta be careful. Use it. You pull your gun to shoot, barely missing the intruder as he makes a jump to the left and runs for the fire escape. Well, that's something. I guess the statue's missing. Wait, hold on a second. That music's a little bit loud. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better. black ash pile is lying where the big statue used to be. That must have caused the fire alarm. Also, oh, they set it ablaze. Hey there, officer. He's breathing heavily and appears to be quite exhausted. I figure he's not in his best shape. There were two of them, and they're very fast. Couldn't see their faces either. Wearing some kind of red hood or something. Uh, uh, give me a minute and I'll contact the commissioner. Okay. A small coin is lying on the ground. Looks like one of the absconders dropped it. Yoink! Picked up the coin. Let's look at the coin. A strange coin or metal with a complex rune on it. Maybe I can look it up somewhere. Okay. So, 
we need to look it up, chances are good we should use the professor's library. And the shelf is packed with books about history, anthropology, and all kinds of reference books. Maybe I can find some information on the coin I found. Indeed. And I've searched through the books and found an own book in paleography. Pelography. <laughs> Pelography. Rosing through the pages, I found something that looks similar to the runes on the coin. Look at the coin. Human. Oh. Protection. Human. And evil. I think one of the words is evil. One of the words is protection. Okay, so now I know what the rune means. Protection, human, and evil. So I figure it's some kind of talisman to protect oneself from evil. It's something. And the computer's not working... Still? We still need to talk to the director. He's got some splaining to do. Good lord, who was that? First the night watchman and now somebody broke in and set fire? I hope you get them. This all becomes a catastrophe for our reputation. Is that all you have to say? Okay. How about you, Miss Carlson? Uh, did you hear the alarm? I hope nobody got hurt. Uh, the fire's been extinguished, right? Yes. Yes, it has. Okay, nothing. I think we're good. Commissioner has been contacted, I assume. Ooh, hello, someone new has entered the scene. Detective Hammer, oh lord. This must be the detective that took over the NYPD investigations for the murder case. Yeah, good evening, Agent Morton. Officer Bristol briefed me on what happened here. I'll take over the investigations for the NYPD from here on. It went a long day, it seems. We'll get some rest and I'll update you tomorrow first thing in the morning. Trust me, the museum's in good hands. There won't be any more incidents. Day two. Okay. Sophie Baxter at Baxter Live 42. Last night at 5 a.m., a terrorist attack struck the Glendale Mall. The whole building has been destroyed, and until now, no terrorist organization has claimed responsibility for this act. Why the terrorists chose to attack during the night when the mall was closed is still unclear. A special commission has been set up to investigate the case, but currently the police speaks at seven dead people, but several still missing. The Glendale Mall, just opened two years ago, looks like a battlefield. Almost the whole building has been demolished. The president will... Oh! Okay, sorry, that's still the news conference. The presidents will open a press conference any minute now, and we hope to learn about the background of this devastating attack. Okay. The news anchor is still reporting on the top story. I should answer my phone, though. I did not know my phone was ringing. Whoops. Uh, good morning, Agent... Or, morning, Agent Morton? Chief Officer Sanders, Homeland Security, calling. Could you please come by the Glendale Mall immediately? I need to show you something. He sounded very anxious. Switched it off the TV and left the rest of the breakfast behind, eager to learn what the Homeland needed an FBI agent for. About 20 minutes later, at the Glendale Mall. Ooh, there's a lot of investigation. Okay. Well, let's just go down the line here. Mobile HQ. A van from Homeland part packed with equipment and cutting edge technology. They get the good stuff while the FBI has to drive 10 year old trucks. Shimmering object. Ooh! Something shiny is lying on the ground. Picked up shimmering object. Okay, there's a coin. I have a pen now, apparently. An elegant pen with an inscription. It reads, for years of honorable research and curation. Ooh. Alrighty. 
he kept people keep on dropping stuff to our benefit. I like it. The mall has almost been completely destroyed. It'll take weeks to clean up this mess. Remains of the mall. So much destruction. I don't even know where I should start my search. Heavily armed guards are standing behind the barriers. Homeland doesn't joke around. Okay. Well, maybe... We need to see... Pin on Mobile HQ. I'm not seeing any arrows. Oh, was, oh wait, never mind. <laughs> I'm a derp. Computer screen. The screen shows surveillance footage from the mall. Alright, we're going to introduce ourselves, but first... Uh, hey there, hands off the computer. You're not working with us here. Okay, I guess now we need to talk to Chief Officer Sanders. He's sitting here like he was waiting for me all along. Why would you have a table in the back of the van? Well, I guess it is an HQ. Ah, hello there. You must be Agent Morton. Thanks for stopping by on such short notice. Yeah, sure. What's the deal? Listen, you won't believe that. We found a letter here on the battlefield addressed directly to Mr. Rick Morton. Now, I'm hoping you can shed some light on what we've got here. I'll do my best. I'm currently working on a case. The freighter arrived last week on the port with all crew vanish vanished. And I've suddenly been called to the Greenwich Museum to investigate an accident as a favor for the museum's director, which turned out to be a homicide. A busy week, but I'm as clueless as you as you what to make of it. Can I see the letter? I'm afraid I have to say no. You'll understand we had to open it and send it to the lab for further investigations. National security. But I think I can tell you what it read from the top of my head. Well, not word by word, but it said something like, We've screwed up. Now you have to fulfill the prophecy. Wacky terrorists. Hmm. Okay. Should I give you the pen? The pen looks peculiar, but I should find out more about it before I show it to Sanders. Okay. Can we write, use the pen on the notebook? Oh. Okay. Piece of evidence. And we can't hand off the notebook to him. We can't shoot him. Let's look at the smartphone here real quick. Hello, Miss Carlson. This is Agent Morton. I'm calling because I found a pen that you might know something about. It has an inscription that reads, For years of honorable research and curation. Oh, what a nice surprise to hear from you. Uh, but please, call me Lissy. And yes, indeed, that is a gift for special services to the museum. Only two people have received it as far as I know. Director Madison and Professor Clayton. Where did you find it? Uh, sorry. I can't tell you for now. Could you please check if Madison still has his around? Actually, I've seen him just about 20 minutes ago using it, so I figure it belongs to Professor Clayton. Just what I thought. Thank you, Lissy. I appreciate your help. Hmm. Okay, now can we go ahead and hand it off? I found a connection to my case at the museum. One of the suspects of the murder cases vanished, and I found his pen lying around just before your men's eyes. Ah, um, as I already told you, we just started our investigations here. But if you think we can speed things up, go ahead. Just report back, and we'll be just fine. Ah, so I guess we got clearance now. Huzzah! Can we use the computer now? Neat. Main staircase. Truffles. Oh, people. Ah, cool. Well, that's interesting. We can't actually see what's... I wouldn't like one now, but I don't see anything that I could connect to the case here. So we have to try and find the connection. 
hooded folks. All right, interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I think we will go ahead and end the episode here. And when we get back, we'll check the security cam footage and see if we can find any more connections. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.